love to hear the sound of those horns honk, especially when I'm not in Tulsa. <laughs> well, it is so great to have each and every one out tonight. If you haven't turned yet, you can tune us into 88.5 on your radio dial tonight, and we'll be uh, we'll be coming at you live and uh, on that direction right there. So we just want to welcome you out to the. Uh, to the National Day of Prayer tonight where the churches get to come together, the pastors get to come together tonight. I think it uh, I think it speaks volume to our community that we as churches get to come together tonight and worship God in spirit and in truth tonight. Uh, so I just want to welcome you, those that may be watching us by internet tonight. This is the National Day of Prayer, and I think that uh, this is probably a good time to pray for our nation tonight to pray for our state leaders, to pray for our local, our, our mayors. They've been, they've been under a lot of stress. They've been under a lot of pressure these last several weeks. So I think it is good tonight we as the Christians can get together at a, such a time as this on a Thursday night in a parking lot of all things. But we can still lift up the name of Jesus, lift up our nation's leaders tonight. They need it and we need it tonight. So I just want to welcome you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, Brother Mike Dershom is going to be uh, our speaker tonight. Looking forward to him from Fellowship Baptist. Uh, and so appreciate their church or community. Good to have Brother Steve Brown here tonight from Town and Country. And so good to have all the different people that's come out tonight. And so anyway, Lord bless you. Lord love you. I want to uh, read some scripture that we're going to open up with a prayer that we're going to put some praise and worship tonight. And so uh, I thought it was very fitting in the book of Ephesians, the uh, third chapter, verse 14. The Apostle Paul the Apostle Paul, in his prayer prayed this prayer. For this cause, there's never been a greater cause than tonight, amen? He says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We are the whole family family of God tonight, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love, that you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ. I'm going to say that again. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us tonight. Unto him be glory in Christ by Christ Jesus throughout all generations, throughout all ages tonight through the world without it. We got a reason to shout tonight. We've got a reason to praise the Lord tonight. He's my Lord. He is mighty to save, mighty to heal, mighty to deliver. He's still setting people free tonight. God is bringing us together in one mind, in one accord, no denominational barrier tonight, but just the whole family in Christ being named under heaven and earth tonight. Somebody praise the Lord. If you love Jesus, hold your horn tonight. Praise God. Let's just go to him in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to come. Father, we love you. Lord, we just thank you for such a time as this. Lord, as we come as the body of Christ, Lord, we come united in love. Lord, united in faith, united in the cross. Lord, I thank you tonight. Lord, for our town, for our community, Lord, our nation tonight. Father, I ask your blessing to be upon every heart. Lord, be upon our singers, be upon our churches, be upon our pastors tonight. Lord, be upon the word of God as Brother Mike comes tonight to bring us a, Lord, a message of hope, a message of encouragement tonight. We just come to sing praises. Lord, you are, you are our king tonight. You are our Lord. And Father, we're here to recognize you and to call upon you tonight. Lord, we come to magnify you. We come to uplift you. Lord, we just come to encourage one another tonight. Father, we just pray for a mighty, mighty, mighty healing. Lord, in our land tonight. Father, we lift up all of our leaders to you. Lord, we just come for such a time as this tonight. Lord, to give you praise and give you honor. Lord, and say, Lord, we need your help. Lord, we need your help tonight. Father, come. Bring the hope that we need. Father, we love you. We give you all the praise for the victory that we have in you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Sister Amanda, lead us in some praise and worship tonight. You know the Lord is going to praise a little bit tonight.
good to see you all here tonight. Let me uh, just share some thoughts with you this evening. In 1952, Billy Graham gathered with 20,000 people there in the Capitol to pray for our country. Later on that year, 1952, President Truman declared that there should be a national day of prayer. And he declared that it should be on July the 4th. Later, President Ronald Reagan declared that there should continue to be a national day of prayer, but it should take place on the first Thursday of May. We as a community gather normally down at Liberty Park at lunchtime, but uh, we felt like it was important for us to meet, and we couldn't meet that way, and so we believe it was important for us to gather here tonight, and I'm so grateful that you've come to pray. You were given a bulletin, and in that bulletin are some folks that you need to be praying for. Some federal leaders, some state leaders, our local leadership, our school board. We'd ask you to take it and not just take it home and discard it. We'd ask you to put it somewhere that you'll see it. At my house, that'd be the refrigerator. But put it somewhere that it so that it reminds you to pray and to pray for those people. Now, there are groups like the Freedom From Religion Foundation who every year file lawsuits that this should not take place, that there should not be a federally recognized National Day of Prayer. In fact, let me just read to you the most recent article I found. Here was the headline for that. Evangelical Christians hijacked the As I thought about that, here's what I want to do tonight. I want to welcome you to this parking lot. You bunch of law-breaking, constitution-bending believers, I'm glad you're here tonight. As we gather this place to pray the Lord together. This year, the theme of the National Day of Prayer is to pray for God's glory across the earth. Now, the scripture they use is Habakkuk. And I don't know about Brother Randall and Brother Steve, but to be quite honest, I haven't preached a lot of sermons from Habakkuk. I haven't heard too many Sunday school lessons come from that. But Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 14 says this, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let me just give you a little background of who this man was. Habakkuk was a prophet. And he was a prophet at the same time as the prophet Jeremiah. And his message was to warn the people of Judah of the coming invasion of the Babylonians. As you read this short Old Testament book, and I hope that you will, I hope that you'll take some time and read that, let the Lord teach you from it. But let me just share with you, as you read it, you're going to see a man who is really struggling to understand what it is that God is doing. In Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 2, Habakkuk said this, How long, O Lord, will I cry for help, and you'll not hear? I want us to look together tonight at some things from this passage of Scripture. The book of Habakkuk is a dialogue. In fact, if you read those chapters, it's a dialogue between this man and his God. And he wrestled with two questions. And as I share these with you, I think some of you probably have struggled in these same areas. The two things as you read these struggle with is why doesn't God answer my prayers sometimes? Can I tell you that God always answers our prayer? Sometimes he says no. Sometimes he says, wait a while. We don't like those answers as well, but God always answers our prayer. But Habakkuk struggled with that. And the second thing was, why does God allow evil to prosper when sometimes the good folks struggle? I've got to ask you honestly, just to ask yourself this. Have you ever struggled with those kind of questions? Have you ever asked yourself those same questions that Habakkuk asked? His name is interesting. Our names are important. And the name Habakkuk has two different meanings. One means to wrestle, and one means to embrace. Habakkuk wrestled. He wrestled with an understanding of why God would allow the Babylonians to come and conquer his people. Why would God do that? But he also embraced. In Habakkuk 2 verse 4, it tells us that the righteous live by faith. Can I just remind you that we don't have to have all the answers, but what we do have to do is trust. We have to trust God to do what's best for us. And 
So Habakkuk, as he looked around, he asked himself, and he said, God, why? God, why? But that's not all that he did. And I want you all to learn from this lesson tonight. He waited on God. He listened to God. And he also sang praises to God. We see that in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. Let me, just, let me just read that to you if I can. Listen to this passage of Scripture. Though the fig tree should not blossom, and there be no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive should fail, and the fields produce no food, though the flock should be cut off from the fold, and there be no cattle in the stalls, yet I will exalt the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he has made my feet like hinds feet, and makes me walk on high places. Lord, I don't understand. I'm not sure I understand all that you're doing, but I'll praise you anyway. Someone said that Habit took, he took this letter, this book, and he went from sighing to singing and praising God for what God had done. Now, Habakkuk 2, verse 14, let me just read it to you again. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let me share just a couple things with you there, folks. It was a verse that described what was coming. It was a verse that described not, was, not just what was coming in a few months to Judah as the Babylonians would come and conquer them. But I want you to understand, this was looking past that. This was looking ahead in time when Jesus would come, and not the first time. It wasn't looking at the first time that Jesus would come. It was talking about him coming again and setting up his earthly reign. And he'll cover this world like the waters of the sea. Now, I saw the verse of Scripture. And I thought, okay, why did they choose that verse of Scripture? I began to pray over it. I began to ask the Lord to show me some things from this passage. And, and I wanted to share a couple of applications with you, if I could. We live right now in a land of why. Who would have thought last year we gathered for the day of prayer, that this year we'd need to meet in the parking lot? Folks, I didn't even know what the word social distancing meant until about go and I'm not sure why that I know what it means now. Church, hear this. We live in a land of why. And we wrestle with uncertainty. And we wrestle with insecurity. So I've got some good news for you. Some good news based on the Word of God. God is still in control. God's still in control. God still has everything under His control. You can stand on that, and you can believe that, and you can be secure in that. You know, I thought about this. Satan thought he won the battle. This coronavirus, when, when Satan loosed that, and I believe that's exactly what happened, he thought he'd won the battle. He thought he had shut the gospel message down when he closed the doors of our church. And yet God's people said no. And please understand something. I love this building behind me. I love the building that we plan to build someday. But the church is not the building we need in. The church is us. The church is us as we gather. We gather here as believers from several different church families. We gather here today as his people. And please understand, church. Please understand that we can gather here in victory. See, Satan thought he had it knocked out. But let me tell you what I believe. I believe the gospel message has been preached all around the world. Literally. Now folks, I don't know if you watch Brother Randall and I on the internet. Brother Randall probably does a pretty good job. I watch him. I have a face that's much more suited for radio and I totally understand that. But I want you to know something. We find out that the service that we put on the internet, we understand now that it's listened to in Germany. It's listened to in Iraq. Church, listen, there's a Mormon bishop in Connecticut that's commented on our service. God is doing something. Satan thought he'd put the gospel in a bottle and put it on a shelf, but he did not do that. The gospel is going out, and the gospel is being shared 
like the waters of the sea. The word of God. Now listen. These have been difficult days. And you need to understand there may be some difficult days ahead. But I want you to stand on a promise. And that's simply this. God is faithful. Stand on that. Trust that. God is faithful. And I want His glory. I want His glory to fill our lives. I want His glory to fill our families and our churches. I want His glory to fill this parking lot. You see, as we've gathered here tonight to pray for our country, we're not gathered here by ourselves. Literally today, thousands of other believers gathered all across this nation in different ways and different places, lifting those same prayers to God as we ask Him to move and minister among us. But I want you to remember something else. Jesus Christ is coming again. He came once. He came and lived for us, died for us, was buried for us, rose again for us. And we can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, a saving relationship. But I want you to understand as you read in Habakkuk, he's talking not just about what's getting ready to happen in Judah. He's looking ahead to that day when Jesus Christ will come and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I confess that to you tonight. I confess to you tonight that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. He's the one that I serve. I'm not waiting some other time to bow my knee to Him. I bow my knee to Him now. And I praise God for what He's done. I want to read that verse again to you. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And that day will come. There are people today who make fun of us. There are folks that probably make fun of us that we've gathered on a Thursday night in the parking lot to pray. And I don't say this with happiness in my heart, but there will be a day that they'll understand who Jesus is. There'll be a day that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The rest of that says, as the waters cover the sea, Folks, I want his glory to fill this community. I'm grateful for Brother Steve here tonight. He's given years of his life to serving the Lord in this community. Brother Randall's been here for a lengthy time, serving the Lord, not just this church, but serving this community, serving the Lord in this place. God's allowed my wife and I to be here for a long time, and we're grateful for that. And our prayer is that God will use, God will use us and that God will use you as his people to make a difference. And so what my prayer is for us is that we will share the gospel as the water covers the sea. I want the privilege of praying with you. I'm going to turn this back over to Brother Randall. I wanted to show him how uh, Baptists can preach for just a short time. <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we love you. Teach us to love you more. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for a prophet who stood boldly among the people, gave a very unpopular message. Thank you, Father, that he struggled in his spirit. He didn't understand all that you were doing, but at the end of the struggle, Father, he came to the point he understood that you were to be glorified. And he placed his faith in you. And so, Father, we don't understand all that's going on around us with this coronavirus and all the other things that are taking place. God, we don't understand all that. And we find ourselves asking some questions. But thank you, Father, that when we ask questions, that's how we get the answer. And so, Father, we just simply want to stand in faith tonight thanking you for this community. Thanking you, Father, for the fact that we can gather here tonight and we can pray and we can worship. We can lift up your name. And so, Father, my prayer tonight would simply be this, that you'd help us to cover this community with the love of Jesus Christ. Give us strength, encouragement, and your blood. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Bye, bye, bye. Thank you, Brother Mike. Don't you love Brother Mike? You know, back in 92nd chapter verse 1 it said it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name O most high to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night I like this verse 4 for thou Lord hast made me glad through thy work here it goes I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Hallelujah. How many knows now we are more than conquerors? We are victorious tonight. It's because of what Jesus does, because of what the cross done. And I believe the kingdom of God is growing bigger and bigger and wider and wider and stronger and stronger and higher and higher every day. Amen. And the waters are covering the sea tonight. What a, what a privilege that we can be in the kingdom of God in such a time as this tonight. Praise God. I'm so glad you come. Uh, in your hand, you got a bulletin. In your hand, you've got a bulletin. I don't want you to get that out right now, and I want you to I want you to hold it. If you're husband and wife tonight, or if you're family, I would like for you to just place your hands on that, like a prayer, like a, a prayer request or a prayer basket, a prayer card, and I want you to lay hands on that tonight. Open it up. It talks about the uh, the national leaders. It talks about our state leaders, our governor. It talks about all of our military, all of our servicemen. It talks about our county and local leaders. It talks about our public schools. Folks, that's a lot of prayer requests and a lot of prayer needs tonight. As Mike said, we're living in a, in a time of why. Well, we know tonight that God is a God who answers. Amen. And so we're going to believe with me right now. We're going to come in corporate prayer. We're going to believe God and we're going to trust God for as you as we pray this tonight. I would like you to just call those names out if you would. Just begin to read those out and lift them up to that God would give them the wisdom tonight. So here we go. Father, we love you. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord, for what a mighty God that we serve. Lord, you said if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, Lord, and seek my face, Lord, and I will heal their land, I'll forgive their sin. Father, we thank you for the promises tonight. Lord, your promises. Lord, we come praying for our nation. Lord, we come praying for our president, Lord, our vice president tonight, and Lord, our brother Trump and Mike Pence tonight. Lord, we pray for James Langford, Lord. Frank Lucas, Father, we uphold Governor Stitt tonight, his family. Father, we pray for Mike Pinnell tonight and Tom Duggar and John Talley and Mike Hunter, Lord, and Joy Hoffmeister, Lord, our system tonight, Lord, our judicial system. Father, we uphold thee, Lord, we don't know the stress, Lord, that they're under tonight, God. But, Father, we know that the God who is able to surround them with godly influence and godly wisdom tonight, Lord, who's able to give them supernatural strength, Lord, in the midst of all of this, Father, we know that you're able tonight, Lord, to stand with them. We pray for other military, Lord, our army, our Marines, Lord, tonight, Lord, we pray for our Air Force. Father, we pray for the National Guard. Father, we pray for every branch tonight, Lord, that you would minister to them in a mighty way. Lord, we thank you for the servicemen. Lord, we thank you for their spouses tonight, Lord, the support. Father, we thank you for the, for the National Guard, Lord, that is being so active here recently. Father, we pray for them. Father, we pray for all the EMTs tonight. We pray for the, Lord, the ambulance workers, Lord, our nurses and doctors that's on the front lines. Father, we uphold our health care workers tonight. Lord, that you will surround them, protect them. Lord, protect them tonight, Lord, from all the viruses and the germs tonight. Lord, we uphold them. Father, we pray for our county and our local leaders tonight. Father, we pray for our, our, our city manager, Lord, by Mr. Philip Kelly. Father, we pray for, Lord, our manager tonight, Tim Campbell, Lord, and clerks, Deanna Couch, and uh, Lord, we pray for Josh Robinson, our fire chief, Lord, all of our commissioners tonight. Lord, we call their names out. Lord, we lift them up to you, Lord, to give them wisdom in leading our great 
have a great community, Lord, of fellow believers and of churches and business people and, Lord, as many of farmers and ranchers tonight and school teachers. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for our great city. Lord, and we, did, we pray for God help us to be the best that we can be. Lord, let it spring up. Lord, you're the one that said a city set up on a hill cannot be hid. Father, I pray for our community to rise above, Lord, and in leadership. Lord, be cutting edge tonight. Lord, welcoming, welcoming a, a welcoming community to the people that come in. And, Father, we pray tonight for our school system. Lord, we pray for all those that for, for our for, for Dale Bledsoe tonight and Rocky Kennedy. Lord, and Emily Nickel tonight and Richard Baker and all of our school board. Father, these men and these ladies tonight, Lord, that are truly labors of love. Lord, that are sacrificing their time and dedicating their time, Lord, to the education of our kids tonight. Father, we thank you for our teachers. We thank you for our leadership. Father, we just thank you for all of our churches tonight, Lord, that have come together. Lord, as this community, Father, we depend on you. Lord, we know that you are our absolute source. Lord, it is in you that we live and we breathe and we have our being tonight. Lord, you're the anchor of our soul. Lord, you're the keeper tonight. Lord, you're the one who watches over us and protects us tonight. Father, you're the one who sent the Holy Spirit, Lord, to lead us direct us. Father, we pray tonight, Lord, as that old gospel hymn says, we will work till Jesus comes. Lord, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, that you've given us, Lord, that we can still be about the Father's business. Father, we thank you. We keep preaching the word. Lord, we keep being the salt and the light that you've called us to be. Lord, help us tonight, Lord, to continue to reach out, Lord, and uphold our nation, uphold our country tonight. Lord, as we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, Father, we pray for that you would bless Israel tonight as well. Father, we depend on you tonight. Father, families, Lord, that are without jobs, that are unemployed tonight. Lord, we ask you to minister to them. Lord, the small businesses tonight. Lord, strengthen them tonight, God. Lord, and I pray, Lord, give favor to the church. Lord, strengthen the body of Christ tonight. Lord, as we rise above and we, and we overcome and we triumph, Lord, in every situation, every circumstance, Lord, we will prevail. We will prevail. We will prevail. Father, we thank you tonight for your boundless love. Lord, your unconditional showed us tonight. Father, we give you the praise and we give you all the glory. Lord, that we're a part such as a great, the whole family of the earth is named tonight. Lord, we give you the honor. We give you the praise and thanksgiving. We give it all in Jesus' name. And the whole church said amen. Praise God. Do you love Jesus tonight? Aren't you glad to be a... Are you going to sing one more song tonight? Come on up here. We're going to sing one more song out, but I, 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 I am proud tonight to be a red-blooded American Christian. I am proud tonight to be a red-blooded American Christian. Praise God. So let's get our praise team back up here and on your way out tonight. Uh, we have some people that's going to collect, uh, collect the offering tonight. you like to give to the Minister Alliance to help those with electric bills, to help those with food situations. Uh, uh, Brother Steve Brown does a fine job with our secretary, Brother Steve Honky Horn tonight. There you are, town and country pastor over does a great job with finance and helping people in our community. Thank you, Brother Steve, tonight. So if you want to give on the buckets on the way out tonight, go to Minister Last. We love you. We thank you for coming. Let's do let's be what God has called us to be tonight. We're gonna to do one more praise song. Be careful on your way out tonight. Lord bless you, Lord love you. I love you so much, and I'm planning on spending eternity with all of you in Jesus' name.
love all you guys tonight. Smile, Jesus loves you. Take him with you. Share him wherever you go. Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. Lord bless you. Take it out, guys. One more time.